हेलो एवरीबॉडी वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल बेस्ट आईटी सॉल्यूशन एंड टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट व्हाट इज स्प्रिंग वुड एंड व्हाट इज डिपेंडेंसी इंजेक्शन व्हाट इज मॉक ऑब्जेक्ट एंड व्हाट इज पोजो क्लास सो ऑल अबाउट थिंग्स सो मेन टॉपिक इज आवर टूडे डिस्कशन इज स्प्रिंग बुट ट्यूटोरियल ओके सो व्हाट इज स्प्रिंग बुट so actually the spring boot it is not a uh, framework so it is a dot spring is the framework and it is just uh, uh, helping the user to use the spring framework in a efficient manner okay so when we are going to build a big web application we need some external jar file and some configuration okay so uh, when we are going to build a big enterprise application or any web application so we need many more external jar file and some configurations for our project okay and when we want to create an enterprise application we need to add a lot of configuration also so uh, during the uh, creation of the enterprise level application <coughs> we need to add a lot of uh, configuration and also we need a uh, external also we need many more external jar files uh, for our uh, project project so but the problem is as a developer we should give more focus on the coding part not the convention okay so convention is configuration so as a java developer we need to give more focus on the coding not the convention or the configuration so we need to give more focus on the coding part we need not to give more uh, we need not to give more focus on the configuration but if we will give, give more much more time to the configuration so we cannot uh, give much uh, focus on the coding uh, as well we cannot uh, um, give the coding properly we cannot uh, code the application or uh, efficient code we can cannot produce okay so we we cannot give much time in configuration hence spring boot comes into picture okay so what does spring boot what does because spring boot provides us all major configurations that we are required during the programming okay so spring boot what does spring boot uh, provides us all major configurations the which we need during the uh, our projects uh, projects so spring boot provides us all major configurations that we are required during the uh, project work by which we can give more attention on coding by doing some small configuration only so oh, spring boot uh, does for us all major configurations so by which we can give more attention on coding by doing some small configurations and the rest major configuration done by the spring boot automatically so how spring boot does automatic spring boot does automatically means not that uh, we, we could not do anything we should say spring boot they uh, please do this configuration for us then only spring boot and do this configuration for us okay like if we, uh, we if we want some jar files and its version so if we to, uh, say uh, add some dependency to the pom.xml file so spring boot what does uh, uh, by reading this pom.xml file whatever dependency added to that xml file it will add to this our Uh, project and also man- maintaining the versions of the uh, project project by version of that uh, dependency or jar file so spring boot is not the replacement of spring okay so sp- you cannot say that spring boot is a replacement of spring because spring boot is not the uh, it is not a framework it is just a uh, uh, it, it is just help developer to work spring work in spring efficiently okay so it is just help the developer to work with spring efficiently in efficient manner uh, we can work in spring with the help of spring boot before spring boot we need to uh, do all this configuration by ourselves when we using the spring framework and it is a very tedious task to maintain the configuration to manage this configuration to manage this um, versions of the dependency or library a jar file so it is very tedious task for us so spring boot is an enhancement to that uh, spring framework to do efficiently that is spring boot doing all the required configurations for the developer okay so you can uh, see in this image so uh, spring is the base, base framework okay and developer uh, use this spring framework only with the help of spring boot is the plugin like so spring boot is help us to uh, doing the uh, configurations for us in the 
spring framework only okay so there are different annotations which is present in the spring boot through which we can uh, do the configurations auto configuration features are there so spring boot gives the required dependency and the configuration to the programmer okay so the main idea of spring boot is to give us a production ready application okay so what does spring boot spring boot gives the required dependency okay so whatever dependency we need spring boot gives that requires the management jar file from the maven or gradle and the configuration to the programmer okay so programmer whatever things need if we just mention that yes we need these things only spring boot but all the dependency and that manages the dependent jar files and the versions and the configuration to the program so the main idea of spring boot is so the main idea of spring boot is to give us a give us a production ready application okay it provides a production ready application spring boot also provides an embedded server so another uh, advantage of spring boot you can say it provides us a embedded server embedded server means we need not the external server that is spring boot jar file that is spring starter web there is starters are there different starters are there so that is spring boot uh, jar file has embedded tomcat that is embedded server by which we can run our project in any jvm no need to add any external server okay so since the spring boot provide an embedded tomcat in a spring boot starter web uh, uh, library or web dependency so it contains an embedded uh, tomcat that is em- which can called as embedded server by which we can run the spring boot in, in any jvm no need to add any external server for the spring boot project because the server configuration also is very important because before uh, spring boot when we are doing work on spring so uh, we need to add the external tomcat uh, to the spring framework spring project and the different and very in, in many situation we are facing that the tomcat uh, port is busy and other various type of problems we are facing during the server configuration also so the rest are now uh, solved by the spring boot framework spring boot so what are the main features of spring boot so we can say features of spring boot like spring boot starter web so it provide different starter starter so is like spring boot starter web to create web application it will give a web project okay so this starter web contain contains all the rest controller controller service repository and all the web application required features we can provide it can provide so spring boot starter web so spring boot starter jdbc jdbc it helps with the, to work with jdbc we can efficiently work with jdbc and spring boot also provides auto configuration feature so spring boot auto configurations library are there to auto configuration management okay, so different uh, starters are provided by the uh, spring boot by which it does the uh, required configuration for us we can also so uh, uh, besides the spring boot auto configuration we can also do manual configuration also but uh, spring boot does not provide any xml file so when we are working with the spring uh, we are uh, doing the configurations uh, uh, with the xml file there are spring.config uh, spring config.xml file was there so we are doing all our required configuration in that xml file only okay so because there are only way that xml file through which we can supply the metadata to the Uh, spring application but in spring boot there is a special file called as application dot property so uh, in this in that application dot properties file we can uh, do our all the manual configuration what uh, what configuration we need uh, in our project okay so nowadays the application dot properties is uh, deprecated uh, not mostly used so there are application dot yml uh, now uh, developed so we can also configure that things in application dot properties or application dot yml file so we can add the properties in this file and can do manual configuration also okay so so dep- uh, another important uh, advantage of spring boot framework that is dependency injection okay so what is dependency injection so in software engineering dependency injection is a technique where by one object supplies the dependencies of another object okay so in software engineering dependency injection is a technique whereby one object supplies the dependencies of another object that means 
it is a design pattern that remove the dependency from the programming code okay so it is a we can say this dependency injection this is a design pattern which remove the dependency from the programming code that means no ob two objects that depend uh, with each other that is loosely coupled between the objects not tightly coupled by which we can inject the object uh, with, with the help of spring framework only we need not to create the object manually by new keyword or by ourselves so that it can be easy to manage and test the application and di makes dependency injection makes our code loosely coupled okay so this is the um, one of the most important advantage of spring boot or dependency injection so that it can be easily managed and test the application so since the um, and di makes our code loosely coupled so since our code makes loosely coupled and no, no, no two objects that depend with each other uh, that is that strong bonding between them has not happened so the te we can easily test and manage the application okay so by the two ways we can achieve dependency injection so this dependency injection in spring framework or spring boot we can in two way we can achieve this dependency injection one is by in dependency injection by constructor through constructor also we can inject the dependency and dependency injection by the setter method so in this two way we can achieve the dependency injection dependency injection by constructor and dependency injection by the set setter method okay so another also important uh, term comes in spring boot that is mock object so what is mock mock object because in in many situations we need this mock object okay so by using dependency injection we can create a mock object by which we can test our code without affecting the mock object created code okay so what is uh, what is the thing that by using dependency injection we can create a mock object so mock object means it is a fake object of the real object so by which we can test our code without affecting the uh, mock object created code so if, if since we are creating a fake object of the uh, actual object by which the uh, actual code is not affected so we can easily test the code without affecting the mock object created code okay so it is also a most uh, important advantage this mock object don't require to test the mock object code again and again so once we have tested the uh, code creating the mock object and need not to test that uh, code of actual object because already this code is tested in by creating the mock object uh, so you, if you are creating the code testing the code by using creating the mock object I need not do need not to test again the actual code. Okay, so this is also advantage of the uh, mock object creation. Hence, a mock object is a dummy implementation for an interface or a class in which we define the output of certain method calls. Okay, so a mock object is a dummy implementation. It is a dummy implementation, a fake implementation for an actual interface or the class in which we define our the output of certain method calls. Okay. So here we are defined the output of the certain method call. In mock object defined, when we are calling a method, what are the output? We can uh, create that is a fake object of that actual implementation. So mock objects are the are configured to perform a certain behavior during a test. Okay. So mock objects are configured to perform a certain behavior during a test. They typically record. The interaction with the system and tests can validate that. Okay, so mock objects are configured to perform a certain behavior during a test. They typically record the interaction with the system and tests can validate that. Okay, and during the test, it can be validated by that mock object. Okay, so this mock object is a very important concept of the Spring Boot. So in object oriented pro programming mock object are simulated objects that mimic the behavior of the real world objects in a controlled way okay so what is mock mock object in, in object oriented programming the mock object are simulated objects that mimic the behavior of the real world objects in a controlled way okay so it just simulate the uh, it that mimic the behavior of the mimic means it just uh, work or perform the same work as the real world object it is not it is a fake object but behave as a actual object so it mimic the behavior of the real world object in a controlled way so it is used most often as a part of a software testing initiative okay so mainly it is the mock object used 
as a part of a software testing only okay so for testing the uh, testing the code we are creating this uh, mimic object or mob object okay so another important uh, concept which is it uh, comes in spring boot which is uh, very much interact with the spring boot uh, that is pojo so what is pojo so pojo stands for plain old java object okay so in software engineering a plain old java object is an ordinary java object not bound by any special restrictions and not required any class path okay so uh, we can say in a uh, programming uh, world a plain old java object is an ordinary java object same so a plain old java object is an ordinary java object difference is it is not bound by any special restrictions and not requiring any class path like the uh, normal java object so a, a normal java object is bounded by some special restriction it needs follow some uh, programming concepts also so this uh, pojo object plain old java object it is not bounded by any special restriction and not require any class path also so the term pojo initially denoted a java object which does not follow any of the java object model conventions or frameworks okay so uh, pojo initially denoted a java object which does not follow any type of any of the java object model conventions or frameworks okay so it no it this pojo object does not follow any java object model conventions or framework that is no not no con concept it follow so nowadays pojo may be used as an acronyms for plain old javascript object as well okay so nowadays the uh, pojo may be used as an acronym for plain old javascript object also so it, it can be used as plain old javascript object also okay so uh, that much uh, in this video tutorial okay so thank you guys and if you think that you have got some knowledge from this video please like and share the video and please subscribe the channel to motivate me okay thank you